Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode 31 of the Korea Bear Knitting Podcast. Hello and welcome, my name's Rebecca, I'm a knitter based in Edinburgh and this is a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I would like to cast on in the not too distant future and I think it's episode 31 but I don't know so <laughs> let's hope that was right and if not it's episode 32, hi. Um, I feel like I've not podcasted in ages which is entirely untrue but it feels like it's been a long time so I've got lots to talk about today. I am surrounded by projects and yarn and finished objects and it's all very exciting. So what do I have today? I have three finished objects, which is obscene. One of them was technically finished last time, but it was blocking and now it's fully finished. In case you had noticed. <laughs> um, so I've got three finished objects. I have got, I think, three works in progress. Oh, technically four. One of them's crochet. And then I've got just like a lot of yarn to show, some about like current projects and some about acquisitions and some just about general thoughts on yarn because that's something I like to do. So <laughs> welcome. We'll see how long this takes. Um, yeah, I am, I've got a really bad head cold at the minute. So if I'm sounding nasally and a bit icky, apologies. I am armed with a lem sip in my really cool cup, uh, which has cake and ball and hank and skein, um, which is basically powdered, al powdered alcohol, it's not true, powdered medication. So that's the one thing. And I have a box of tissues, but I'll try to edit out any of the sneezing. <laughs> but I can't promise anything. Maybe there'll be, maybe a sneeze or two will make its way in. So let's start with talking about my first two finished objects, because very excitingly, I have a tester call going live today. So, um, this is the Corin cardigan, it's C-O-R-R-A-N, and it is a cardigan pattern by me. And I'll put some footage in of what I'm of me wearing it, like standing up so you can see. Um, this is a row, well, this is an Oliver lace cardigan. This is the stitch pattern. Um, and it is it is all over mesh, like you can tell that there are holes in it. Um, but they're not like huge holes, they're relatively relatively dainty holes <laughs> um, and yeah it's all over lace this version is the round necked version with long sleeves and there's also a short sleeve version with a v-neck and I'll talk about that one in a minute and um, but let's talk about this one first I have wanted to make like this cardigan has been in my head for months like six months maybe more than that I think I looked for a pattern like this before before I was designing and didn't find what I was looking for and then since I started like leaning into designing, I probably once every like three weeks would try a new lace swatch to find the lace that would give me this look and I would kept not finding it. So like it would be too stringy or the holes would be too big or it would be too random or it would be too heavyweight. Like there were so many, it was a real Goldilocks situation until I landed on this one and this one was just right. Um, it's super lazy lace. It's only four stitch repeat and it's just yarn overs and knit two together and there's there's not really like there's a tiny tiny chart of the stitch pattern like a four by four chart but like the pattern is not charted so I think this is probably the easiest pattern I have designed yet um it's knit from the bottom up which is fun I think it's a really nice shape uh you knit from the bottom up and do the ribbing and then you go to the underarm and then you knit the two front panels and the back panel separately and then you seam well, you actually seem you bind off together. So you get this like pretty neat looking seam. And then you pick up for the sleeves. I love that there's like one single rib stitch here and it's the same at the front, one single knit. And then you pick up for sleeves and the long sleeves version, I've got some decreases. So it's like a lightly tapered sleeve. And then you add the ribbing at the end. So it's all, it's all pretty straightforward. Nothing super crazy complicated. Like a few different techniques, but not... I don't know, like three needle bind off. That's quite a fun technique, which is pretty easy, but fun to learn. Picking up stitches. Yeah. So I really like it. It is also got a huge gauge. Um, I think it's around about 13 stitches per 10 centimeters. So it knits up really, really quickly. Um, it is knit on like DK to worsted weight yarn. This yarn is knitting yarn from Pearl Soho. 
and I love it. I think I talked about this last time, but I'm a big fan. It's the first time I've used it. It wasn't gifted or anything. I just ordered it for myself um, a few weeks ago and it arrived and I was like, why did I order this color? Like, I am a neutral girl. What am I doing? Um, and then at the start of this year, I realized I have a bit too much yarn. <laughs> so instead of ordering new yarn for it, I was like, well, I should knit something in pattern. Like I should knit something that I already have. And so that's what I did. And I really like it. I think the blue was a real perfect combination and it makes like a bit of a statement piece, but it's not like, it's not crazy. And I feel like, I feel put together. Like I feel like a fun lady. I feel like the really cool librarian when I wear this. Like I am the cool librarian who knows where all the books are and also gives you the best recommendations in this. I actually wore this cardigan to the library like a week ago. So this is the first version. I think that's everything about it. I am going to weigh this. It's got the buttons on. Oh, that's the thing. The buttons. I learned I am very bad at sewing on buttons. <laughs> I mean, I'm not bad at it, but it's just, it might be superwash yarn. Actually, no, it's not superwash because I split splice the ends. The yarn, like on the buttons, has come. You can kind of see it here. It feels like it's like kind of gaping a little bit because the buttons are sitting so far over. And that is because these buttons are so loose. Don't worry, I'm wearing a camisole under. These buttons are so loose <laughs> because of how I sewed them on. So I turned up to knit night wearing this a week ago on Monday, or like, yeah, two weeks ago. And I was like, ladies, my buttons are wobbly. What do I do? And the best tip was to use a matching color of embroidery thread and like hold it with your yarn to sew the buttons on and then weave in those ends. And I just tied them off. So I just like put it through, tied it off, cut the ends short. So my method didn't work. So that is the method recommended. And so I need to do it on this one. Okay. Um, so that was my method that I'm going to do next time. I had great intentions. Oh, my ears are blocked. So my intention had been to, like, that's what I was going to do. I was going to take all the buttons off and re-sew them on. And I did not do that. <laughs> so I will do it sometime this week. Um... I have plenty of embroidery thread, so I'm not worried about that. And I'll report back and see if it helps. I've also not done it on the second sample because I was, again, short on time this morning. But yeah, so that's the first version. Let me try on the second version. <laughs> okay, so here's the second version. So again, it is the Oliver Lace. Um, my button spacing and to change a little bit. Like I have a button up here that I don't want there and a buttonhole. So I will redo this button band at some point. Um, it's got short sleeves. These sleeves are going to like, just above my elbow, I guess. And it has a V-neck. Yay! So this is my second version. Um, this is just off the blocking mats. Like it was on a radiator last night in the hope that it would dry in time for today. <laughs> I also just weighed them. So the blue version is 350 grams, which means it's pretty much bang on 700 meters and that is for the 112 centimeter bust. Yeah, and then this one, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm much more sniffly than I thought I'd be. This one is 275 grams. However, this one I did make a mistake on and I'm gonna re-knit a second sample of in the short sleeve one during the test knit because this doesn't fit the way I want it to. <laughs> so I think what will happen is I think I'll make this one long sleeve, like I'll take off the ribbing and make this version long sleeve and then I think I'll make a second a third sample in short sleeves I think in lemon yellow in a cotton yarn or like a wool cotton blend because it is really for me a bit more of like a springtime look and this one especially I thought of being almost like a summer top so yeah I'm gonna make another one but this is the v-neck version I used Peruvian Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland wool again I had it in stash and yeah two, 275 so that's like, I think they're 50 gram balls. So, um, and 50, yeah. And it's 200 meters per 100 grams. So exactly the same yardage as the Prosto Home Knitting yarn. Um, so what is that? Like 275, like just under 600 meters. Um, and like I said, so I cast on the wrong number of stitches for this. <laughs> um, just because I cast this one on before I started grading the pattern out. And once I graded it, I had to count this one, the first sample again and realized that I had more stitches on the first sample than I thought I had, which is fine. So 
So this one, I took the extra stitches at the back portion just because it was easier to have like, take a single amount. It's only off by, I think it's off by about five centimetres overall. So it doesn't quite fit the same as the other one, but I think it's still a pretty good fit. And yeah, so, and this one's just got the little cute little short sleeves. I feel like I'm not quite sitting at like optimal <laughs> height to show this pattern. Um, but again, I'll put a little video in of what it looks like. And I think um, my preference so far is that if it's a light colour yarn, I would wear like a pale camisole underneath. I think that like the dark holes showing through is just, I don't love it. And then with the other one, I tried it with a white camisole underneath and it, my boyfriend was like, it really draws attention to your boobs. <laughs> it's like, thanks. <laughs> so I changed to wearing a dark camisole underneath the blue one and I think it works perfectly. So that's the current cardigan. Um, let's chat quickly about the tester call. So um, testing, te test knitting is when you get a preview copy of the pattern and like a time frame, and then you knit your own version of the pattern in that time and give feedback on the pattern. Now I've heard, like I watch Andrea Mowry's and that I want to every single week. And I think she said a couple of times that like test knitting is not about finding mistakes. I have not made it through a test knit without finding mistakes. <laughs> so be prepared that like there could be like points of clarification or like there might be changes to the pattern while you're knitting it. I've always had the pattern tech edited before it gets to a tester, so it's not just had my eyes on it, it's had like a professional tech editor look over it. But I, yeah, it still hasn't ever, like every single time there's always been one or two things about the pattern. The most usually what it is, is that someone will get confused at a section and it's about working out how to make that piece less confusing so that future knitters will find it more clearly than others. And that's generally what I find with tech editing. Uh, sorry, with test setting, is generally like, I didn't quite get what was going to happen here. And then they're like, oh, how about this wording? Oh, that sounds much better. Or on occasion, like, I, it says pick up one stitch, one in every stitch. And for me, that was 21, but your pattern says it was 22. Like, those are the small differences that tend to come from test setting. Um, the way I run it is that you get like access to a Google Doc, which um, is like the live document. And any changes that get made there pretty much immediately, especially things like numbers. Some of the wording stuff I don't do to the end, but it means that like you almost always have access to the most frequent, like most updated version of the pattern without me having to send out loads of updates. And there's also an Instagram chat. Now I've had testers in the past who don't have Instagram and they're just not in that chat. Um, but for those who are on Instagram, there's like a chat which is usually just quite friendly and like a bit of chatter and sharing your yarn choices and sharing updates and, if you get stuck on something in the, I'm running a test net right now for my Lanark sweater. And in that one, um, somebody, it's in half fisherman's rib or half brioche. And so there's a whole discussion yesterday about the best way to fix mistakes in half brioche. And I wasn't like, I was what reading that conversation, but mostly that was like testers helping each other out. Which is really nice. And what I love is that I see now that when my testers share pictures, um, all the other testers are like, in the comments of their pictures like yes girl I love this <laughs> it's so nice so I do think it like it's a nice bit of like community the test knitting I love test I love running test knits it's one of the best parts so yeah goodness I've talked for 15 minutes about this pattern and about the test knit so the form is down below it's just a google form um I generally oh I did say this on instagram today I usually pick testers who I either know because I talk to them frequently, maybe on Instagram, or I know them in person, like if they come to my knit night, then of course they're testing for me because then I'll get to see your pattern every week. Um, and then my second point of call is generally people who have tested for me before. Sorry, I feel like I'm speaking very quickly. My second point of call is people who have tested for before, um, especially those that have like completed the test and given good feedback. Um, but every test I always have like a handful of people that I've never had tests for me before. And that's maybe picked on like their aesthetic, like if they if they like style their naturally differently to mine, I love seeing that because that just means it's like it shows the versatility of the pattern. Or if they just seem really cool. <laughs> Sometimes like um I have uh I don't know who watches the Brook Willow podcast, that's Anna. Um she is currently testing my Lanark pattern and like I just think she's super cool and she's really good at styling clothes. So when she applied to test knit, I was like, hell yes, I'd love to see her finished version. I want to see how she styles it and how she wears it. And like, 
she's really like outdoorsy and goes like skiing, like cross country skiing and hiking and camping. And I'm like, I want to see my sweater, like this design in that environment. So I was like, yes, 100%. So yeah, that's test knitting. I feel like I spent more time on this than I intended to. But um, if you're interested, you can fill the form in below. It will stay open, I think, until midday on Sunday. So that'll be like just shy of 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah, just shy of 48 hours. Um, and then usually I fill all the sizes, but if there are any sizes that aren't filled, I'll keep it open a bit longer. And if you have any questions about test knitting, you can always send me an email or send me a text message. Not text message. Who sends me text messages? <laughs> You can send me an email or you can send me like a DM on Instagram or even a Ravelry message. I will try to get back to you before the forum closes. So yeah, I feel a little bit chilly, I will not lie. The cold sleeve, the short sleeves in this room, it is still February in Scotland. So let me talk about my next finished object because then I'll put it on. And actually let me put it on first. Ah, it looks so cute! <laughs> So this is my Lento sweater and um, the Lento is a pattern um, for a line of magazine and it is a super simple like top down raglan sweater and the great thing about this is the gauge it's knitted at, it's knitted at I think a 16 stitch gauge which means um, it's a really like open breezy fabric which isn't transparent like you can't see through it um, but it doesn't use up very much yarn which is lovely. So this is my first one. I should say I'm currently running a knit along for this pattern together with Amy Palco who is um, another Edinburgh based knitter who also comes to Knit Night and um, she has the Meaningful Stitch podcast and we were talking about a Lento knit along for so long um, so we finally started it. It started on January 5th and it runs until March 5th so I guess we're like just over halfway through and this is my first entry. It's also my first ever striped sweater. So um, let me show it a little bit. So doo -doo -doo. it's not a great, I put a picture as well so you can see what it looks like, all of it done together. So um, let me talk about this pattern or let me talk about my version. So I used Wooly Knit in five different cones of British wool. I have got a lot of woolly knit yarn. Um, one of the cones, so this blue cone, was gifted to me um, and the rest were all just things I had in stash. And I held scraps of mohair with each of them. So like this one is drops, this one is Phil Kalana, this one is tin silk mohair, this one is Phil Kalana and this one is drops again. And I did a stripe every seven rows. Um, I did the short rows all in the same white colour. At first I really hated this bit here, but now I kind of like it, like it doesn't bother me. And then I just started the striping and just kept it going. The body is like a perfect number of stripes. The sleeves you will see, like I had, I did a full repeat and then I did the first two colours and then I did the white for the cuffs. Um, and yeah, I think it's really cool. It was like, like I said, my first time doing stripes. Oh, the only edit I made to the pattern is that I changed the increases. I think the pattern is knit front back and I changed them to make ones because I found that gave a slightly cleaner like pick up with the different colours whereas I found the make one like a little bit messy like you could see this just made a much cleaner line. And yeah, I really like it. However, it came out much smaller than I planned and I don't know how and I might give it a second block. So my first one came out smaller. Um, I made this, I made the pattern once before. I didn't, like I just start, I just cast on and knit until the, the raglan fit. And I think I just got a bit enthusiastic because um, I could do with just like an extra little bit. And the place I notice it most is on the neck. So I think my neck is a little bit too high here, which is silly because I have short, like quite a lot of short rows in there. Um, but it's just not super comfortable. So I think I'm going to give it another block and see if I can just like here on the yoke give it a little bit more room um, and I think I'll get a bit more wear of it that way. I will say like it's made up a folded collar and I just did a single collar so the collar probably is tighter than it should be um, and of course I didn't follow the pattern like I just knit till it fit so this is all on me. <laughs> um, that being said somebody did message me and let me know that I think the actual pattern might have an issue in it. Mm. I think if you follow it exactly, 
you end up with slightly different numbers on the sleeves potentially. Um, but I've made quite a few raglan sweaters, so I just cast on the number, follow the short row instruction, and then just knit and increase every second round like I would with every other raglan. So just bear that in mind if you are taking part. I think the comments on Ravelry are pretty clear about what's wrong with it. Um, and they might even be updated on the website. Maybe the website version is like the updated version, I'm not sure. But yeah, so this is my, I feel like a kind of vintage, oh, the other thing I did, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> There's so many things wrong. I'm pretty sure I should have stopped the sleeve decreases earlier. I think I'm still decreasing here. And there are like X number of decreases and then knit the sleeve till X length. And I think I just kept decreasing. <laughs> so my sleeves are like a little bit tighter on this one. Now they're not, they're not like too tight or anything, but just more tight than I would normally have my sleeves, I guess. But yeah, I feel very preppy. If you're very like gap 2010, is that even right? Um, and yeah, I'm thinking, now I'm wearing it, I'm thinking like this is just bothering me a little bit, like the way it's fitting here. Um, but I'm a firm believer in a second block. And the first time I didn't know, like I did no stretching. I just put it in the water and laid it out flat. So I think I might put it in, make sure like it's, it's trying to stretch a little bit, maybe even like another inch into it. I think it'll be perfect. And for my second version, I'm gonna do it properly. Now I'm going to put back into my blue cardigan because it's like the outfit that I chose today, it goes on my skirt and stuff. And then talk about my first work in progress. I really thought this morning that I was like doing something cute with my hair and like we had some like cute fringe going on and I realised that has not happened. <laughs> I'm living in a dream world. Okay, so uh, we were talking about lento, let's keep talking about lento with my first work in progress because I cast on my second lento. So um, this, I've already said, is pattern by Lana Magazine. Um, I knit generally between, or my first one, which fits very well, is knit between the 42 and the 45 inch bust. So it must come out at like 40, 43 and a half or something. Um, and, oh, I should also say that to enter the giveaway, the make along, you just need to post on Instagram with a hashtag, let's lento. And there are loads of people knitting them. I've seen so many people tag, like so many versions, so many really cool versions, like scrappy ones. I saw this beautiful pink moral version. I've seen a like bright yellow version. I've seen stripy ones. I've seen ones with like unspun yarn. Um, so this is my second one and I have grand plans to make three or at least to cast on the third one, I think. Um, but like I said, grand plans. <laughs> so this is my second version. It's on a much too small needle. I am just working around the yoke, um, but look at this. Oh my goodness, it is so soft. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm a big fan. So I don't really ever work with hand dyed yarn. I have some, but I, I've used it for like socks in the past, but I don't think I've got a single sweater. Am I just lying? No, I don't think I do. I've got my first Lenzo, but that's like a tonal, so it doesn't really look, it's not like a speckled hand dyed. So this yarn is patisserie and it is a yarn from Stranded Dye Works who um, Jude is based over in Fife here in Scotland and I'm holding it together with a strand of drops mohair in the colour vanilla and I completely stole this idea from Laura Penrose from Penrose Knits um, because she got like a speckled yarn and then the vanilla and I honestly it was like a trust the process situation because I was like is she crazy like this is so yellow it really is, it's like a very, like a, like a peachy yellow colour. And I was like, these do not go together, like what is coming on? Um, it's stunning, so yeah, props to Laura for that. It's, it's so nice. It's like softened the speckles, but they're still there. And the speckles are so much more interesting than I thought they were. Like there's just because like these are, there's like a yellow one here and here, and there's pink. And then like I get to areas, oh, like some like darker ones so yeah this is literally my edible sweater because it's patisserie and vanilla so it's like some I don't know some really nice like eclair or like I don't know what shoe shoe pastry or something and it's super it's so soft I think the drops more here is pretty soft it's not the softest um but it is pretty soft I find it fine nice the skin and the patisserie is in is a superwash very no nylon I think it's 75.25. So it's just really, really, yeah, it's lovely. And I think for me, this is pretty close to being a neutral. Um, like it's not quite there, 
but it's not, you know, it's not like a really obvious... It's, I think it's something I could still wear quite comfortably in the same way that I would wear a neutral. Whereas a lot of speckles might be like really bright pink or like really dark, like bright colours, which I don't tend to wear as much, she says, whilst wearing a blue, a bright blue cardigan. But does that make sense? Like I find this, I think this is like an easy to wear speckled. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. Um, it should only, I only have two skeins of this, but I think that'll be fine. I've got four skeins of the mohair. Um, and I think my yoke is not far from being done. I was knitting it last night and I think I need to, I mean, that being said, knowing that my first version is a bit on the small side, I might knit a little bit longer on this, but I'm aware that this one will stretch out more than the other one because this one is 100% British wool and this one is super wash, so the super wash will give a bit more. But um, I just need to get it on some prior on cords and give it a go and I'm probably relatively close to spilling for sleeves. So yeah, it's not my primary project at the minute, like it's just on in the background, but it's really fun to knit. And typical, I lost my needle, that perfect. I'm working it on a five and a half. And I found my five and a half for my sleeves. Um, I lost them and then I ordered a new one and the new one was like, it had like five inch tips on a 16 inch cord and it was fixed. So like I couldn't knit with it because this, the needles were too big. But I finally found the needles again. So that's my first work in progress, is my lento and it's in this very cute budget bag. Okay, next work in progress, okay, is another design and it's my second sample and I am furiously knitting on it because I realise I do not have as much time as I thought I had. I'm like, the pattern's coming out in March, I've got loads of time. Well, firstly, it's almost already mid-February and secondly, the pictures are happening before the pattern is released, so the sample has to be done by then. And thirdly, we have just booked, which I'm very excited about, uh, like five days in Italy, in Aosta, at the end of March. And I probably don't want to be, we get back on the 25th of March and the pictures are being taken on the 26th of March, which means I do not have time to block it once we get back. So probably it should be done before we go. But I'm now thinking there's a strong possibility that I am blocking it on holiday. <laughs> And I could like take the stuff with me to sew in the to sew on the zip when I'm there. So this is the Lanark sweater. It's currently in testing. Um, again, it's on a very short, small needle. I'm being a bad podcaster today. Um, I will pop a picture of the finished design. Um, my original sample was knit in bare naked yarn from bare naked wools and their kit DK base, which they sent me to design the pattern in. It's stunning. It's a beautiful base. Um, but for the second, my second sample, I'm using like a bit more of a budget friendly. I kind of like to do that. Like if if I've made a version in like a real, like a more pricey yarn, I like to be able to show an option that's not as pricey. And so this is my less pricey version. This is, where am I? So I joined um, in the round, oh it smells so sheepy. I joined in the round and I've done um, about 10 centimetres and my plan is to do 10 centimetres a day <laughs> until uh, and get finished by Saturday. I don't know how likely that is because half fisherman's rib is honestly like a reasonable amount of work. But that's, that's what we're currently aiming for. Um, so yeah, it's all over half fisherman's rib, which is also half brioche, like it's the same thing. And I think I've mentioned before that I think the, the, the reverse of the stitch is generally known as half brioche and the front side is generally the half fisherman's rib side. Um, so I've done literally all the complicated parts are, are already done, which is like, it's a bit complicated, but the folded, collar can be a bit tricky and then casting on you fold the collar there basically are two complicated rows in the entire pattern um which is the row where you bind off the you fold the collar because in that row you also cast on for the back and then the picking up stitches for the front and so those are the few bits that i had to work through with the with the tester form because just trying to make that as clear as possible. For some people it was really clear and they were like, yeah, it totally made sense. And other people were like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so that's been kind of fun. Oh, I, when I knit with white yarn, I realise how much my hair sheds and all I can see is my own hair all over this sweater. So yeah, so I've made good progress. It needs to be about, the body is 40 centimetres and I've done 10. So another 30 centimetres of body and then a couple of sleeves and then a little facing, you know, just a couple of things to do. 
and we'll see how we get on. I think if I do not finish this, I think if I finish this, it will be such a beautiful piece to wear. I hate when people call it a piece, I should not say that. I hate when people are like, oh, I just finished this piece. It, it is a piece, but I don't know why it bothers me. It frustrates me. And I just use the phrase. So anyway, um, I think it'd be a really nice sweater to wear uh, when we are in Italy. I'm undecided as to whether I'm going to ski. I don't ski. I have learned to snowboard before, but I don't ski. And I'm considering taking a lesson, but I'm not decided. So if I take a lesson, it'll be like one day, I think my partner, I think Sam will go skiing and I think I will stay and like walk around lots of cute little Italian cafes and knit for a week. Like that's perfection. But either way, like just this and like snowy Italian mountains. Perfect. So having it finished would be nice because then I could take it with me to wear. Um, I have got two more versions being knit. Uh, two sample versions. So usually, um, or when I've done, pa I say usually, I've only done three big pattern releases, but for all three, I had pictures taken with test knitters who are local. And then we, like those, they've obviously got their own finished objects. And then we did the pictures with them. For this one, I only have one local tester. Actually, I have two, but they're both making them for their husbands. And I felt weird being like, do you use your husband want to come get pictures taken? Because like, maybe they find that weird. I actually don't know if they're married, husband slash partner. So I asked my mum and my brother to take the pictures with me, which I thought would be really fun. Um, I don't, it's, it's a like unisex pattern or the intention is that it could be knit for either, for like anyone. So I want to show pictures of it on a guy. So I asked my brother and my mum was coming too. So I needed to, like, because there aren't test knitters, I obviously had to have a version for at least all three of them. I knew I wanted to work through a version myself, um, and I really wanted a vibrant coloured one, because I think it just makes it, like, I think it will just showcase another element to the pattern. So there's this neutral version, which I think will be really lovely, and then there's a navy blue version in Tuka Wool DK, which will eventually be for my mum, but the sample is being knit to my brother's size, like, the length is a bit longer, and then we'll see how it fits on her and it, I might need to rip out the ribbing and redo the ribbing, like take it back like an inch and redo the ribbing. Um, and then there's a there's a version we made in Santa's Garden, that orange feeling, which is going to be really vibrant, which I'm very excited for. So I'm going to have three of these when they're finished, technically four, but one is for my mum. So a little bit over the top, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm just really loving it. But I've not really picked it up for a little while because I was so focused on getting my corn done and now I need to get into gear. Um, I bought five skeins of yarn and I think I'm gonna have to go pick up a sixth. I was on the fence about taking five or six and I was at my local yarn shop and they were like, just come back for the sixth if you need it. And I was like, you're right. So I have got this much left and I, I might even need more. It should be strange. Anyway, I've got this much left of I think my third skein and yeah, I still have a lot of knitting to do. So I think I probably need at least one more. And yeah, I'm starting to see like versions pop up on Instagram. Testers are getting really into it. Um, there is one in Labia de May. Um, I don't know which base it is, but it's like a purple, like an ultraviolet purple color. Um, there's one in like a beautiful, like rich red. Uh, there is one, um, Kelly, who is Cocoon, Cocoon Knit, where are Cocoon Knits? She's done a few of my tests before and her version is in like lemon yellow with this like statement beige zip. It looks so good. So yeah, I already want to make 10 more, um, but I will not, four will be enough. <laughs> so that's gonna be my major focus for the next few weeks because I have to get it finished um, ahead of, and like I'm already thinking, of course, have I thought about a single item of clothing I'm taking to Italy? No. Have I considered what projects I'll be casting on to take with me? Yes. So we're taking hold luggage. We never take hold luggage. We've got hold luggage because we're going to a wedding before. So we're going straight from the wedding the next day. We're flying out. And um, yeah, I need to, so we need to take a bit more stuff than usually. So I'll have a suit and I'll have like a dress and heels. So we've got hold luggage. And that means I can take Okay, let's talk about my final work in pro, no, well, my final knitted work in progress. Um, this has been my primary uh, meetings knitting for the, at the moment because it doesn't require any focus on me. Like I can just 
let's pretend I'm on a Zoom call with you. And I can, like, this is exa exactly it. Like, this is what everyone on Zoom can see. And this is me engaging in conversation, contributing, um, discussing, listening, whilst also just. I <laughs> know, I did that and then I caught the yarn. Like, this is what it's like. And this is, everyone's like, how do you get so much knitting done? Well, I have at least two hours of meetings a day. So, yeah. So this is my current meetings and knitting. And it is a Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit. I mentioned this last time. I got this yarn from Holst. It is Holst Cielo in this colour, which is almost like a mushroom colour. Um, and it's so soft and fluffy. It's incredibly soft. It's like an alpaca wool blend, I believe. Um, and I love this yarn. But I've had such bad, bad luck with it because I've knit with it twice and both the things I've made I have not kept. Um, so third time lucky. But when it arrived, I was kind of aware that if I didn't start knitting it pretty soon, I wouldn't be able to wear it while it was so cold and it is a bit of a chunkier yarn. So I cast on pretty quickly and I'm making the Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit, um, which is like a drop shoulder sweater. And I'm making pretty good progress. I've done like 25 centimetres, I think, on the body and I probably will make it to like 35 and then do five inches, five centimetres of ribbing. Yeah. And then the sleeves to go. Um, so yeah, it's drop shoulder. The only modification I've made, well actually, I'm knitting it at a slightly different gauge. So I think the pattern is like 15 stitches and I got 16 stitches. Um, but I really like the fabric. You can see it's like, it's, it's a pretty dense fabric. Like I didn't really want to go down a needle size on this. Um, so I am knitting the size one, which will give me the same measurements as the size three. And the pattern itself, does it have a split? I think it has a split hem. I'm not going to do a split hem. Um, it has a folded, like a turtleneck, a twisted rib turtleneck. Now, I already have a sweater in a similar colour, which is a turtleneck. And I still outwear it all the time because I find I have to be really cold to want to wear my turtleneck. So I decided to not do it on this one because it would be so samey. And I don't get like loads of wear of that one. So I've just done, um, I think I did 12. It's quite a deep neck opening. So I did 12 centimetres, maybe even less, maybe 11 or 10 centimetres of ribbing. Bound off and then I just sewed it down with a whip stitch, um, which means I could at a later date, ooh, there you go, um, I could add elastic in here if it starts to give. But yeah, that's where we're at. I think it's going to be cosy. Like I'm not in any desperate need to get this finished, but also I don't want it to be on my needle for ages. So... We're just, we're just plodding away. We're just putting some time into it. We've got meetings. It's right next to my desk all the time. And I'm excited to wear this. I think it's going to be really wearable. I find myself in the mornings when I work from home looking for cozy. Like it's kind of cold outside and I tend to wear like loungewear for work. Like I wear like a variety of stretchy trousers. And so I don't want to wear like a scruffy sweatshirt, but I don't want to be wearing like a nice sweater. So I'm always looking for a cosy sweater and I don't have that many of them. And so I'm hoping that this will fit the bill. My mum has sent me a video of our friend, uh, one of her friends breeds puppies. Is this even gonna work? If you sent me a video of the puppies playing. Look at the puppies. Oh. oh my goodness. I went to see them a few weeks ago and they were little, they were little slugs and look at them now. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about my final work in progress and it is crochet. Now, last time I was here, I shared that I had a, uh, I had bought some yarn from Lily Knit and it was their chunky wool hanks and they are 800 grams. <laughs> Cause I was like, I'll make a blanket. And then I've never, I had never touched it. And I've been doing some shuffling. I was like clearing down some space. I've, I don't, like I'm not saying I'm going to stop buying yarn, but I want to be making sure that I'm picking stuff from stash first and just generally trying to reduce what I have. Um, so I have a whole suitcase worth of yarn that I'm taking to knit night next Monday to de-stash. And now finally it like fits in the space I have, but I just don't want to, like I find that with every new design, I want to buy new yarn for it. So I need to start focusing on what I have to use it up because there's no point in it just sitting in my stash forever. Um, so I shared the giant hanks. Now I balled up the green one that I showed last time, but I have the other colours here. So this is what a hank looks like, which is 800 grams. 
so this is in the harvest color, which is beautiful. Uh, oh, oh, oh my, my camera is just really not enjoying like focusing on anything today. Here we go. Um, it makes a very fashionable necklace. And then I also have this color, which is the beige, which I'm not sure if I like. Let's just put that out there for what I'm planning for. Um, so the, yeah, these are the Hanks. I had four of them. So this is just half of what I'd ordered. And it's in a giant cardboard box under my, under my desk. And I was like, I need to start working on these because I should be using them. Like, they do not serve any purpose under my desk. So I decided to make a crochet blanket. So I find that I like the look of knitted blankets, but if I'm knitting, I always, like, I want to knit a garment. Like, I'm always knitting for something else. And, like, I'm not going to pick up. I won't reach for a knitted blanket over, like, a knitted stockinette body. Just won't happen. So I decided to do some crochet. Now I've tried some crochet in the past and I found it so, I just, it was so time consuming. Like I made these really cute little squares and they just took me so long. It was DK wet yarn. And I, like it was taking me like half an hour to do a square and I was just not getting joy out of it. So I decided to re remove all barriers of entry. Like how can I make this crochet the easiest crochet possible? Now of course we're using a chunky yarn to start with. Um, I am using an 8mm hook, so this is where we're at with my green ball at the minute. I just ordered these online from Amazon. I got a pack of like all the big sizes. It's actually here. This is what it came like. It had lots of big sizes because I wasn't really sure which one to use and I tried a couple different ones and went with the 8mm. Um, and I've timed myself and it takes, my, it takes me 8 minutes to make a square. That is perfect. That is yeah, so I think I've succeeded in removing all barriers. Now let me show you what I've done so far. I've only worked on the green. I have to hand wind all the balls, which is why it takes so long. I have a lot of squares. I think I have 24. Yes, I have 24 squares. Um, and they are just a really, I think that's the right way around. They're just a really simple granny square. Um, and that's what they look like. And it's three rounds. So that's the minute you do like the, you join in a circle. And then there's one round and then there's a second round and then there's a final big round. And this is it. And they are, I measured them, but I can't remember. I think they're about five inches across. Um, and yeah. So what I've been doing is like trying, like some days I won't make any. But then if I do make them, I'll try and make like three or four at a time. And then chuck them all into block. And then for a day, so I put these into block yesterday. And then I'll pin them out. And then I'll just pop them on top of the radiator. Our heating comes on every evening from five to eight. So I tend to find that like, if they've been on from the night before, they're still pretty damp because it's quite a dense wool. But if I chuck this on the radiator, by tomorrow they'll be completely dry. So we are getting there. So yeah, 24 and I, it's not been tedious. Like it's not, like I've not lost interest. We're still going. And we've made pretty good progress on them. So what I'm thinking, I, I measured them. It's 18 and a half grams per square, which means I think I can make like 40 something squares from each color. And so I think I worked out that I could do like an eight by 10 square blanket. Um, and yeah, that would be like 80 and that would be like just enough, I think. So my plan is to do two colors. I'm gonna do this color, I think, and then the harvest color. And then I'm gonna join them all with the white. So that is the plan. Um, so let me just hold the three of those up. I think that'll be really nice. And then, I don't know what to do about this big beige one, to be honest. I just don't love it. I just don't think it's all that nice. Like, I'm just... It's like a kind of peachy pink colour. However, they did just bring out a blanket... Uh, sorry, a rug pattern. For like a... It's called the linseed rug. And it's used with this. And so I did wonder if I maybe get another white one, I could make this into a rug. And that could be really cute. Or I could just give this away. We will see. But I'm proud of myself for actually like starting a blanket making some progress and enjoying it and I think I really thought about it well like okay I know myself I'm gonna get sick of crochet 
and when it's like a finger blanket because it's so big. So how do I remove as many of those like break points as possible? So it's just easy to do. And that's what I did. So, uh, those are all my projects. So I think I just have um, a little bit of acquisitions to talk about. The first thing though I wanted to mention is a few episodes ago I talked about my host yarn and struggling to knit it when it's not been blocked and just not liking the feel of it. So I have tried pre-washing some and it has made a big difference is what I would say. I still find it needs to be blocked at the end. I was doing some swatching and the end fabric is beautiful um, and it's definitely made it much easier to use. So I think I'm going to do this. I have a, I've been swatching for something and I think I'm going to use this on my brown colour um, or maybe my grey colour, I'm undecided. But I'm just going to, it's a little bit of extra work, like it's not the easiest but what I do is just, this is I think about 60 grams and then I just wound it from the cone onto, oh, a little wobble voice there, from the cone onto my swift. Now I have a bit of a wonky swift, I've got like the blue, is it the Nipro one, the, the plasticky one so I think it would work much better on like a sturdy wooden swift. Um, but it's got a little like handle at the top, so I just tie like use a slip knot to one of the arms, I guess, and then I just spin it on. And then I'm not very good at the tying part, but I just use like little figure of eight knots to tie them on with scrap yarn, and then soak it in like hot water, and then squeeze out some of the water, and then lay it on. Or again, I put it on the radiator um, to dry off, and then wind it back into a cake. It's a bit of fuss. It's definitely a bit of a fuss. And it would make me consider twice next time if I was going to buy host. But I, I mentioned before, I've got quite a lot in stash. And I would much rather use what I have. And I love the colours and I love the end fabric. So if this is an extra step, it would be at the end of the world. But I just thought I'd mention that I tried it and so far a success. And I did some swatching with the washed yarn and I really like it. Well, I don't really like it, but I don't dislike it. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to cast on a project with it. So that's a little host update. And then the final thing is an acquisition, so um, I got some ground this week which I ordered a while ago so I just thought I'd talk about it. Um, in terms of summer knits, I think I will only be doing two, well this is like a spring summer, and then I think two. One is with some yarn that Wooly Knit have sent me. Um, they reached out and asked about a collaboration again and I've worked with them before and like this episode has got a lot of Woolly Knit in it and of all the stuff I've shown this Woolly Knit, like one stripe and my Lento was sponsored, everything else I bought myself because I really love their yarn. So they sent me some of their cotton base to try and I will say I was a little bit nervous because I'm a bit fussy about 100% cotton. I find it can be a bit brittle or like, I don't know, but I actually really like it. So I'm talking about that next time because I think I've worked out what I'm going to make with it. I know the design in my head, I've started swatching um, and I think I'll be casting it on fairly soon. So hopefully next time I'll talk about it. But that's my one, my like first summer pattern. And the second summer pattern is um, going to be a bit more colourful and I'm so excited about it. So I ordered the yarn a while ago and one of the colours was on back order. So it only arrived this week. But these are the colours. It is Nothing for Olive, so I almost dropped it. Nothing for Olive, Cotton Merino. And these are the colours I've gone for. They're kind of like denim colours, I feel like. This is like a real denim blue, and like this is like top stitching on jeans and stuff. Um, so this is going to be what it is. And I've got a bit of a swatch to show, but I'm not really sure what it's going to look like in the end. But I thought it'd be fun to show a little bit of like the process um, behind this. So I don't know if anyone's seen those crochet wave sweaters. I think it looks so cool. Like there's like the Malibu from Wool and the Gang and I was like, I always see them on like Pinterest and stuff. And I was like, can I recreate that like wavy effect with knitting? So I tried and I use, um, I use the 100% Merino from Beautiful Knit, from, what's it called? Knitting for Olive. <laughs> in other colours I had it on hand. So it's not my favourite colour palette, but like it was an interesting way to show the process. So this is my swatch. So I use like a real traditional, like, um, I think it's something called Old Shale or is it Feather and Fan? I'm not really sure. And so I use the traditional one here and you can see it's got like holes, but I was like, I don't really want holes in it. So then I tried different methods of making the waves without having the holes. So you can see that these ones are hole free. And then I wasn't sure about the center garter. So I tried it without the garter and tried like a regular rib stitch. 
So I thought that was really cool. Like that was kind of my process with the swatch and I've had this pinned up and I'm obsessed with this. So the end one I think is gonna be a round neck. I don't think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be round neck. And I'm still, I think there's gonna be some lace on the white stripes. Um, where here is like a garter bump. I think my plan will be to turn the garter bump into an interesting like lace section. Um, I need to do a bit of maths before I cast this on because it's going to be top down and I want to, I need to work out how I increase in the feather and fan pattern. But yeah, I'm really excited. It's kind of in the back burner, like I'm probably not casting this on for maybe at least another month because I've got a lot like right at the front of my brain. Um, I got the yarn this week, which I can't show for my design submission, which is not out until the end of the year, but um, the yarn is with me and I'm going to start working through that design soon. So there are other things taking priority, but my goal is that that will come in at some point and the yarn arrived this week and I want to show it. And because it was on back order, I got, I ordered from knit.co.uk, um, which I love, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I ordered a lot of my yarn from there and it was on back order so when my order came there was a little surprise in it as a thank you for being patient. I think it took a month a month to come but she'd asked like she said I'm missing one of the colours do you want me to send the order without it and I was like just wait like I'm fine I'm not in a rush to start it. But she sent me this really cool needle case so this is from like the mindful making I think it is from um, Knit Pro. It's got this like cute man mandala at the top and it is a needle holder and it comes with these really beautiful, I don't know if they're handmade. I feel like it'd be hard to machine make these, but maybe that's, maybe they're laser cut or something. Um, there we go. Really beautiful wooden needles. So I've got a couple in here. I've also just got a couple of like regular needles in, which is good because now I've got them in two different places. Like I've got some here, uh, which stays in the office. And then I've got another one, which stays in my knitting kit. And what's really nice about this, it is pretty chunky, so I can't lose it. I mean, I probably still will lose it, but like, it's easy to identify and to find it. And I like it a lot, so I thought I would show. So that's it for the knitting. Lots going on, lots coming, lots of my needles. But yeah, I hope you've, en I hope you've enjoyed. Um, a life update, it has been a pretty horrible couple of weeks, if I am being perfectly honest. Um, my company has just gone through a restructure and they told us last week on Wednesday that some people will be losing about 20% of the, of the people are being laid off and I was told that my role was at risk and then yesterday I was told that my role was no longer at risk which is pretty normal like they follow the process that's what's meant to happen in the UK I think legally how it works is if they're going to let anyone go with a job title everyone with that job title has to be informed that they're at risk. So I'm a product manager, so all the product managers were told that we're at risk. Um, but, and they told me like, well, we'll give you an update within a week. I think at that point, like some people might choose to leave and like take redundancy packages or maybe they're already going. And then they were waiting to see how all that would settle before taking the next steps. Unfortunately for me, I'm still working, like I still have my job. But it made a really, really, really anxious week. It was pretty much bang on seven days. I felt so unlike myself. I was all over the place. I couldn't really settle into anything. I was feeling really, really anxious. Like all, I'd sit down at de my desk and at like half past eight in the morning and my anxiety would be through the roof and I would not, it wouldn't go away until I fell asleep. And then the next morning I'd wake up and it would not be there for maybe half an hour and then it'd start again for seven days. I felt like completely worn out. So that's been a real challenge for the past, past week. You know, I'm very fortunate. I've not been redundant. I was also, you know, I don't have a mortgage. I don't have kids. I'm not on a visa. So, um, like it wasn't gonna, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I'd lost my job, I would have found another job. Um, but yeah, it was just the uncertainty was really stressful. So I went to, on Tuesday night, I went to my first therapy session. Um, we have access to like a mental health platform and one-to-one -one therapy sessions through a work perk. So when they announced the layoffs, they said like, we really encourage you to do this. And I, at first I was like, oh, I'm fine. And then I realized I was not fine. So I booked in and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was very mindful and very relaxing. And it was just nice to talk to somebody about it. Like I'd obviously talked to my partner and I talked to my parents about it, but it was nice to kind of talk through how I was feeling and break down maybe why I was feeling the way I was and what that all meant, which was lovely. And now I'm feeling much, I'm feeling way better. I feel good that I've spoken to somebody. 
I feel good that I got the news. Um, that's all feeling much better, but it has made for a really stressful couple of weeks and my brain has just been all over the place. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I did, I wasn't sure if I'd hear yesterday and I was always planning to record today and I was like, if I don't hear right the day I'm planning to record, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record because I was just really like wired, just couldn't settle. And I thought, I don't think I'm gonna be able to sit down and record a normal episode if I'm feeling as anxious as I am right now. But the good news is, is I got the good news yesterday. Um, other than that, like I said, we've booked a holiday for two weeks, which means I think the next episode, I will take my camera and try to record there in our um, apartment that we're staying in in Italy. We have got the wedding of some friends uh, the weekend after this weekend. Um, and we're gonna, that's down in the London area. So we're gonna go straight from there to fly out to I think, Turin, spend a week in Aosta and then fly back to Edinburgh and do the pictures for the Lanark sweater. And then this coming weekend, I am really excited because I am going to a sewist event. So I also do some sewing. I will say knitting is very much my passion and it's where a lot of my like, creative energy goes into, but I make a lot of my clothes and I have a lot of fabric and I tend to make the same 10 things over and over again. So even 10 things, the same like four things over and over again in different key fabrics. Um, but there's a local fabric shop called Hey Sew Sister run by a girl called Georgina or Georgie. And she has put together like a sewist afternoon tea. It's like a Galentine's, Valentine's thing. Uh, so I've never been to one before, but I um, thought it'd be fun to attend. And it's on Saturday from two till six, I think in Edinburgh. And I've already made an outfit for it. I was considering making it like something else, but I think I'm just gonna wear what I've already made. It's like a pink and red check dress with big puffy sleeves. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm excited to like go and meet some other people who sew that are like creative. And there are some people going that I follow on Instagram that I've not met before, but like I've seen posts before. So it'll be nice to like have a chat with them. I definitely feel a bit nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I think that's about it. I think that's all that's going on over here. We're still like, we're starting to get, we were having a very, very quiet January. and like, things are starting to pick up again for February, but that's kind of nice. Looking forward to seeing friends, doing some traveling. Yeah. It's all, it's all looking pretty good. So I think that's all my updates. Um, if you're interested in testing the Corin Cardi, you can apply down below. If you've got any questions about it, feel free to ask me. And yeah, I'll be back probably in two weeks, probably from, a, I don't know if you know what we're saying, an Airbnb in Aosta, in the Aosta Valley. Um, probably with less knitting, but undoubtedly I'll still build a chat for half an hour because that's what we do. I hope you enjoy the next couple of weeks and I'll be back soon. Oh.